Right. Welcome to Fox Tales Movie Club. I'm Sebastian Fox. And I'm Tony Sherman. And we have a special guest here, Stephen Sampson. Hi. How are you guys doing? I'm doing Thanks. pretty well. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having Thanks. me on. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. So when we asked you to join us, um, we asked you what kind of movie would you be interested in watching? And you suggested Primer. Um, so... It's like I, cult I like, classic. Sorry, sorry, I feel like we're getting into the movie, or the, no, like, the discussion already. I think that would have been fine. But. <sighs> okay. Oh, we'll just keep this all going. <laughs> it's, it's more authentic that way, right? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what people yeah, create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure how much we wanted to go right into it and how much we wanted to like intro because like we hadn't even said we were going to. Well, we did say we were going to do primer last time, but that's yeah. fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Anyway. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the the movie was a uh, pretty good. I saw it in a week. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, took you, took you that long to watch it. Yeah, in a week from yeah. now. Uh, cool. You saw it last. You saw it next week. <laughs> I'm so confused already. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway. <laughs> each each uh, video we take a chosen movie and talk about our thoughts and opinions. Uh, we'll be getting into the character plot and technical achievements with no regard for spoilers. So if you haven't seen this movie and don't want to hear said spoilers, you have been warned. And also stick around to the end of the video to hear the topic for our uh, next one. As you heard, today's video is going to be discussing Primer. Primer is a movie that came out in 2004, directed, written, produced, composed, edited, casted, and designed by Shane Carruth, uh, starring Shane Carruth, and David Sullivan. Yeah. So, I'd never seen this movie. Yeah, I've, I had never heard of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I watched it years back, back, yeah. uh, you know, Five, six years ago? Yeah, yeah. I know we've talked hard about it. Hard to keep it. track of time. Yeah. <laughs> Watching that movie yeah. reminds me of how hard it is to keep track of time. Right. Yeah. Keep track of a lot of things. Yeah, and I know we've talked about this movie before, and, like, starting in with this movie, I was like, okay, let's see. I know I'm going to be confused right away. I, I know I'm not going to be able to keep track of everything through this movie. But like I was trying my best, like, okay, let me try and pick up on all these different clues and see if I can follow and get some idea of what's going to happen. And all of these little things, I'm like, oh, there's a number there, a number here. They said this here, they said that there. None of that came back to, to, to tell us anything about the movie. So all of that was for naught. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the first thing I wrote down was that they got a new refrigerator, and then that never really came back. Yeah, so. like, there was, like, there was, like, some stuff about, like, the refrigerator and them getting, like, coolant and Freon and stuff from the refrigerator. Ripping everything out of the refrigerator. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, yeah. It's funny how that works. Like, oh, well, we can use this, and then, you know, we'll be able to use that to, you know, make our machine. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's gonna cost us our three thousand dollar <laughs> refrigerator. Maybe we yeah. should spend the five dollars at Home Depot just to yeah. buy something else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I like how they portray this group of this sort of like a tech startup. Yes. Exactly. Ideal. Yes. And like the dialogue that they have is very it's like fast and they're talking over each other and right. it's hard to follow, but it, just, yeah. it feels real. Yeah. Exactly. Like the the whole idea of it being like this is like some kind of startup where they have like some kind of idea that they're trying to develop, but they're not like getting anywhere to some degree. Like they're like struggling, and they're like worried about finances and where's the money coming from. That whole idea, like, really seems so real with so many other startups. Yeah. Uh, so like, I was like, just this happened seems so in, great. Happened in a garage in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. And, exactly. Yeah. I really like the one line where they're like, "We know we made something great, mm -hmm. but we don't." We don't know exactly what it is. We just know it's great. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I feel like that's something that definitely comes back in a lot of, like, startups and comes back in a lot of ideas of, like, we know we have something, and if we just, like, give it to someone else, it could explode, but then we no longer have control of it. We no longer have mm -hmm. the rights to it and all that stuff. So it's like, you know, what do they do? Like, they want to try and hold on to it, 
and try and understand it because then they have better control of what it's going to be used for, how they can, you know, utilize the money and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's definitely a big thing. Yeah. What's really intriguing about this whole movie or about the plot in this sense is uh, once they figure out what the machine does, when they figure out this is able to essentially <laughs> travel back in time. Yeah. And bank, you can get, be inside time. of that in the time machine of yeah, some yeah. sorts. Yeah. yeah. Even still, they're like, oh, wow, we have this amazing thing. What should we do with it? And they... <laughs> They really don't have this grand idea of, even so, what what can they do? They what can they do with gamble it, yeah. penny stocks and yeah. <laughs> maybe think about, oh, maybe we exactly. should go do something with the final four. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. They're just like, oh, yeah, we can like figure out what stocks are going to go up. And then we go back in time and we buy those stocks. And then we make that money that, that, that making the difference. And so, like, they're – with the whole, like, in, like their idea of – we clearly have the, developed this idea of being able to time travel and we can do certain things. They just end up deciding to like make ultimately what becomes Trump change, just like a meager amount compared to the long, the big picture scheme of things. So it, it seemed very strange to me that it seemed like they were just so constricted in, in what they would or wouldn't want to do. Uh, my main problem with this movie, though, is that it, I feel like it doesn't set up a ton of things very well. Mm -hmm. uh, there are like people that kind of are important in the third act that I don't really know who they are. Um, yeah, they're just kind of mentioned once or twice. Yeah, in the first half. Right, like like other than like this idea of the um, Abe and Aaron having to deal with the multiple Abes and Aarons and this like weird kind of time travel thing. Beyond that, there's this idea of this Mr. Granger, who is this investor, but then also this person who ends up bringing like a shotgun. Well, it was his, to his daughter. So his, his daughter's, daughter's ex, ex girl, ex his ex boyfriend brought a shotgun to, to this party. It's really not your fault to get those two people yeah. mixed up yeah. because yeah. these people aren't introduced. Some of them don't show up on screen, and yeah. some of them, you know, they do with really no proper introduction. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. And I think that tends to happen with, you know, maybe if this is the guy's first film, I'm assuming. Maybe Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> well, assuming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, likely, but I mean, I don't know. But I mean, it was, it was shot on a college campus for like seven thousand so, dollars. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely which, a which, very low budget. That's a whole another thing yeah. that we'll probably end up coming circling back to being the jack of all trades, but master of none. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. very he, impressive what he did. Exactly, but yeah. Can't expect him to be the most amazing writer. And even the most amazing writer still mm -hmm. needs help writing. That's true. Yeah. yeah, like like I feel like the story and the concept and, and the ideas of what he wrote and what he wanted to do in the movie was amazing. Like this whole like time travel kind of the 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 way he went about the time travel is, is very unique considering all these other ways that people have developed time travel concepts. Yeah. And, and so, even, even the plot of the entire story, like it makes complete sense. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. you go online and read about what, how it actually happened. <laughs> all these pieces, how they fit. Yeah. But I, I feel like it is like, okay, well this was something that, like you said, was, it was $7,000. They had a very limited budget. They didn't have the manpower or the time to necessarily do all, all the different all, things that Hollywood could do necessarily. Just both also the time of the development time or production time and mm -hmm. also just how much time the film lasted for yeah. from yeah. you know turning it on to the credits roll. Yeah, barely, that barely have, over an hour. Could have played into, you know, funding and production time, but it seemed yeah. like if they had maybe more time and money and things resources, maybe the movie would have been longer. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes just making a movie longer can make it a lot worse, too. That's yeah. true. So, uh, I, I, I did read about the fact that the amount that they filmed down to the, how much they actually used for the, the movie was a ratio of two to one. So they actually used a very large portion of what they filmed. They actually cut very little in terms of all of the things that they filmed. Um 
and it took um, I think uh, uh, it took Shane Carruth like several years of this post production period to right. actually like go forward like okay I'm finally done with the movie and feel comfortable with releasing what I've produced uh, so like this whole idea of like I feel like a lot of the work was put on him yeah um, where like this was kind of his thing and it was, it was like, okay, we don't have that much money, so we're just going to kind of do what we need to do to get the movie made. And then a lot of it just kind of falls on him to make it work. And so, like, that's Funny so enough, difficult. That's very similar to a lot of startups that happen in basements. A lot of times it falls on, you know, a couple people just having to put in a lot of work to yeah. get it yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it's yeah, a huge I definitely difficulty. definitely feel like that group was very, uh, it was probably very based on hit the Pro, uh, process of making the movie yeah 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 that whole idea like even like when they're talking about like in the in the beginning of the movie we're talking about like the funding and the money it was like yeah we need to go and buy this it's like okay make sure to get a receipt do this you know where are you gonna buy it how much is it gonna cost yeah like that whole thing like it felt very real so like it was like this seemed like not even just like necessary to, like th- like, like this was from the movie like this was like the whole no, we had that process. actual like, conversation. Yeah, huh? this, this was like actual <laughs> conversations that they had while filming the movie. So it was like this was like that, that it just works so well. Uh, going back to like going back to like early in the movie when they when it's um, Aaron and Abe and the two other people who are part of this startup. Yeah, I really liked the one shot that they had. Where it's the four of them at, I guess, like this kitchen table, like this, this this dining room table kind of thing that's set off a little bit from the kitchen. And we get this scene of the Christmas tree and the wife in one side of the screen. And then them kind of like arguing, discussing, going back and forth with, you know, how do we want to do this? You know, what kind of money? You know, what ideas do we want to develop? Where do we want to get this money? So it's like this interesting back and forth between like the business and the home life that they're like when you are working in like some kind of startup you're working a lot of times in your home and you have to deal with the fact that there's going to be things going around around going around you that are you know built around your home it's like the wife doing the dishes and you have the christmas tree out and all the presents and the lights and everything yeah but that was an interesting back and forth kind of split there. Now life goes on, even when you're preoccupied with other things. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. Hey boy, I guess as right. an aside, in Boardwalk Empire, there's one of the Italian mobsters, and he's getting a heated like argument and business yeah. discussion with someone about money. And then his mom, you know, angry Italian woman, starts knocking on the door. I'm like, the Thanksgiving dinner is done. Are you not going to get out of there? It's like, this is a cold-hearted killer that no one ever, you know, yeah. yells yeah. at or anything. And his mom just slaps him like, <laughs> get, your, get your shirt on. <laughs> like, Sit down at the dinner table. We're about to pray. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, uh, it's so weird, this idea of like, one person will have one idea of like, this is what's going on in the world for me at the moment. Mm-hmm. But everyone else has something else going on in their own world. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. guess that's kind of that's kind of one of the things that's going on here is that like Aaron throughout this movie, we get several different versions. I don't know if that's the right word, yeah. but uh, versions of Aaron, like the one where it's like this is his first time going through the idea of this concept of he hasn't doesn't know about this this time machine yet. The one where he has the earphone in and he has this idea of he knows what's going to be coming up, and so like, and then the basketball misses. Right? The basketball the guy, yeah. the guy misses the shot. Yeah, and so like these ideas of you know we have this plan of this is what I know is going to be coming up, and then. It doesn't really work out perfectly in terms of what we expect to be going on. And so even when you have this perfect plan of, I know what I need to do to progress my my mission, even if you have this perfect plan, it doesn't always work out exactly as you thought. The pencil and the pen? Yep. What was the point with that? Oh, just like the idea of like. Well, they mentioned that in the movie, right? Yeah, that's a. Yeah, I forget thing. where they did it, but it was that. 
uh, NASA spent all the money to make the pen, and U.S. Uh, Russia just made a pen. Or just you pencil. just use a pencil. Yeah. I mean, like I feel like I've heard that that idea yes. several and times. My, may or might not be true. It seems like you're saving money until all these lead and wood shavings. Yeah, that's, that's, up everything, that's exactly catch the thing. On fire and <laughs> the uh, like. I guess carbon can be, you know, flammable. You know, which is why they made the pen in the first place. Right. The, the they graphite. Used to, they used to use pencils. Yeah. Right. Like, especially if it has lead, the the the, the uh, wood shavings, mm, it can yeah. be very flammable. So yeah, like or using just a pencil. Floating around and you know, you know, jamming up any of the electronics. Yeah. Unintended consequences. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so like there's certain aspects where it's like they bring up ideas that are like, oh yeah, that makes sense, but then it's like, you know, like there's other reasons. But I mean, that it. is a common, a common idea. Yeah, yeah. it's a common story. It's yeah, a very common idea. story that, oh, you know, do what's obvious rather than try and like make this very convoluted solution to an obvious problem. Um, uh, like going back to that time box, like when we have that like first instance where it's starting to be used. We get uh, this this shot of Abe just like asleep on the ground yeah, for some reason. Just like cut jarringly cuts to him on yeah. the ground on the floor of his apartment. Yeah, and like the phone's ringing and he's trying to answer it and it like makes several cuts where it's like him trying to wake up and answering the phone and talking and it's like then he's back on the ground again and waking up and it was like this and it was a, it seemed to me like like the first time watching through, I was like, okay, this seems like it's several timelines that are like overlapping where he's waking up again. Yeah, or so, I, th I thought, because it was cut like right after they were taking the lid off of the box the first time. So I yeah. thought something happened something because happened. they took the lid off. Yeah. And now he was uh, just like, this was later and he was didn't remember anything between there. And between the sort points. of time jump. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like I don't I don't really know what was going on with that, but it was interesting to see. Um, it was interesting to see that interaction. And be like, okay, you know, he's waking up and like Ooh, he's the time right. Yeah. The effects of the time travel. He's disoriented. Us as the audience, we don't really know what's going on in, at that point still. So we have that confusion. <laughs> There's the whole uh, you know unknown side effects of time travel as well you know that's the thing one of the first places you start to see like you mentioned he's all disoriented yeah, yeah. but later on you know the guy's ears start bleeding yeah and he's just like you know is this normal and the guy's like for time travel you know and i could question like how would i know or anyone know right like, yeah yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. know. It's like, well, just for people, like, I'm just bleeding like, from the yeah, year. I'm bleeding you know, from the year. This is, yeah, <laughs> yeah is exactly. Same, like, not, but speaking of about, like, the effects of time travel, <laughs> even, like, with new and upcoming scientific discoveries, like the semi-more recent one, you know, relatively with radiation, you know, like, you know whatever, in the last, you know, like, Madame Curry, you know, like, I was like, 40s, 50s, 60s. Yeah, like yeah, like, you know, I Less than 100 years yeah, ago. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, so it's, sem semi yeah. recently in a sense, but uh, how people were like, they don't really understand the effects of radiation and how there's subtle effects that over a period of, you know, years, you might find out, oh, wow, that was actually bad for me. Right. Yeah. yeah that's I true. thought this was going to give me superhuman strength. Right. Yeah. So, like, Aaron going on at the end of the movie to create a large scale kind of. Uh, box that he can have that's an entire room but he still maybe doesn't understand the full consequences of what that's going to create or what's, right. what's going to happen well, there that size or it could be environmental effects yeah. that you would have no idea about yeah and that was that was something that I, I i did like that about this movie is that they did leave the city like after they started the box and started the time where they just left they they left their cell phones they didn't bring their cell phones they didn't have any kind of they went to a place where no one knew them and they tried to distance themselves from being able to interact or like cause any kind of change or cause any kind of yeah. warp in what was going to happen uh, and so like that was something that i felt like they did really well with for the most part um yeah. or at least uh, abe did he yeah. wrote out like the rules of what they were supposed to do but mm -hmm. uh the other guy, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Aaron. After the first time, he went back 
to stop the shooter yeah. later. Right. Um, and was it Aaron who also accidentally kept his cell phone on him? Yes. Yeah. He did. He answers it and he's like, oh, oh. or no, it's ringing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do cell phone towers work? Right. How do cell phone towers like, oh, it goes to the first one. Like, who oh, does it? I, I don't know. I don't know how cell phones work. And it's like, so like that whole interaction was like, Abe was like so strict about like, this is the rules we need to follow in order to make sure that we don't change anything. We don't create any errors. And Aaron was just kind of like, well, I know what I want to do once I'm able to go back in time. And so I'm just going to like make sure I can do that. And if I end up messing something up, oops, my bad kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so with him at the end of the movie creating this massive room, it seems as if he doesn't have the whole consequences of, okay, well, what could happen if you have this whole room? That you go back in time a month, who knows what could happen that could change entire aspects of uh, the time, the, the timeline. So that they had after just being in there for a day at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, uh would be greatly exaggerated if you're there for a week or a month at a time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. Really exponential, I'd assume with with most things. You know, if you uh, if you try to run for ten minutes, you'll be probably pretty tired. If you run for an hour. More than you know, six times harder. If you run for yeah. a day straight, yeah. you might die. So yeah. you, you don't really know. You could be in there for two weeks and realize, I got to get out of here. You know? Yeah, like, that's very true. And and that was something that like, I feel like I would probably have to watch this movie a few more times to really get a grasp on. But like, the amount of time that they have to be in the box and when they can leave the box, because it seems as if that that one time when they're like first in the box and A leaves and then. Aaron leaves after Abe mentions, oh, you left too early. You jumped out too early, and that's why you're feeling this nausea and this disorien yeah. disorientation. So, like like you're saying, if you're in there and you're supposed to be in for a month and you leave two weeks in, who knows what's going to happen with, yeah. with that kind of thing. So, yeah, like, there's, like, these certain aspects that um, – I feel like, you know, people love to talk about time travel and what would you do if you could time travel and, you know, what would, you know, what would you do? Like, how far would you go back? Would you, what would happen if you could go into the future? What would you change? What would you try to learn? But I don't feel There's like people truly even think about those consequences. Maybe right? it's best just to play with penny stocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Maybe it's best to just not change anything. I was like, I'm just gonna get a little money here and there. Yeah. Maybe Abe had the right idea there. Um, I remember a very like a very simple short story that I read um, back when I was like in middle school or something called The Sound of Thunder that dealt with this idea of time travel is a normal thing. It's like this tourism thing that time travel and they go back in time and they see dinosaurs and they see Stonehenge back when it was first created and all this stuff and the story is that someone goes back in time steps on a butterfly by accident and then like jumps back into the normal time and the entire world is different and so like you have that whole idea of the butterfly effect and like this this whole idea of you just change one minor thing and the entirety of history has changed and so this, of course, takes it to a very different kind of time scale, but it's a yeah. similar kind of idea of, you know, this whole, what are we going to be able to change, you know, and what are we going to be able to change that we don't even realize we're changing. So it's a very interesting kind of concept there. I wrote who gets told. Gets told. I don't know what that means. Who gets told who has ownership? I don't remember the, the context. Um, of the box, top of the box or whatever, right? So one time they were saying they should tell the other yes, two people. That's right. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh well, they're they're just uh, they don't need to know. Right. Yeah. Like at the end of the movie, they're trying to figure out. You know, we we blocked out these other two people, right? At the beginning of the movie, there were the four who were sitting around the table, yeah. and we've really only been following Abe and Aaron. Well. What happens to these other two people? You know, do we tell them what we created? Do we, you know, give them any kind of ownership? Do we, you know, let them know, you know, what this thing is? And they even the other two even helped out at the beginning before it started working, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Like they were helping out. They were part of this whole thing, and then they just kind of like shut them out. Yeah. 
And so it is kind of like this thing of, you know, like, okay, well, who does have, you know, control over this? Who has ownership? Who would be allowed to have any kind of rights over this? And, uh, well, that's kind of a typical thing, though. If something as delicate as what they discovered, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you might not want that mass produced. Yeah. Mass produced. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mass produced. Yeah, exactly. That This is something where... In this day and age, you know, the smartest kid out on the internet, next thing <laughs> yeah. you know... Yeah. yeah, but Aaron was the one who uh, wanted to shut them out. He was saying he was willing to give them everything else to get yeah. them out of this. Yeah. And he's the one. Give who, them their car, give them the truck. The, yeah, and yeah. he's the one who was building the larger version at the end, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Aaron has this, like, idea of, like, well, let's build one. And, like, the, the, I think there was even, like, that idea of, like, taking a box. And, like, he mentioned it was modular. Taking a box, yeah. putting a box inside of another box, and, like, well, let's run a box inside a box. And, like, how does that change mm-hmm. how that box runs? Yeah. And so, like, this whole idea of, like, okay, well, he wants to keep a hold of that because clearly that's the 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 gemstone that they created. And all the other, like, little minor technologies are just, you know, little bits and pieces. I don't know if the gemstone's the right word. Maybe a... Uh... <laughs> Oh man! Nuclear bombs. Yeah, of, uh, yeah, like definitely very explosive and powerful and dangerous all at the same time. Yeah, he he uh, created some kind of like Pandora's box. You know, if we want to like allude to that, uh, where like you open it and chaos ensues. So like we have this whole idea of okay, yeah, we have this time traveling box, but we have people who are giving their ear bleeding from the ears. People. Who you know, it's disoriented kind of, in the mind. They can't really. Yeah, they can't yeah, write. Right. Yeah, they yeah, can't. They functions. can't visualize the letters. But you know, when they write them, it's just. Yeah, so like their their minds are there that they can see the letters. They know what they want to write, but then when they go to do it, their bodies don't follow what their brain is telling them. Mm-hmm. So like we're getting like this really kind of chaotic kind of breakdown of you know, what's happening to, to a their stroke body. of some sort. Yeah, like a yeah. stroke. Like it, it is. Like, you know, if we do, like, uh, at the end of the movie where we have this whole month-long, you know, long-term thing, what what could happen to his body? Like, You're losing that muscle memory of some sort. Or yeah, that could be. Like, like going, like, something of that nature of some kind. Yeah, you can, oh, right, this is what I want to write, but, you no, know, writing's all muscle memory. You don't really visualize, oh, I'm writing a, you know, a B. Yeah. 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 And, that, and that's something that I have even noticed myself, like, at certain points where, like, I will go to like type in a password and like this is a password I've used for years and I know the password is ingrained in my memory but the second someone talks to me and says, oh, what is it that you're typing? I'm like, oh, I've had to type my password and I start thinking about it. I can't remember. I don't remember my password. I don't remember what it was. And I was like, I can't type it now. I, I forgot my password. Try Talking about your password out loud. What are spell out your password? Yeah, <laughs> most people could not do that. Yeah, but it's like it's so ingrained in this muscle memory that I just I can type it. But the second I think about okay, well, what was what was the actual password? It it seems to escape me, right? <laughs> so it is this kind of like weird kind of thing that that's that's taking place there in, in between the mind and the body. I do like another guy. Like thought, an idea, thought about yeah. leaving, bring bring your car as well, so they can leave a car. Mm-hmm. This other guy, yeah. he wasn't thinking about. Well, why would we leave another car? He wasn't even thinking about the two people that might enjoy having transportation when they get out of a box. Yeah. Not just yeah. that high You're not ride. thinking four dimensionally, yeah, Marty. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. It, you it, got your other selves to worry about as well. That's that, that's true. Yeah. Like, it, it's something that I guess you know. As people, we're not used to thinking about. Yeah, <laughs> like well, yeah, it's what difficult are... enough to think about myself, and you know, God forbid, I can get the ability to think about other people. How can <laughs> I think about my other self <laughs> or my other friends' other self? It's, yeah, it's kind which of gets a... really confusing. And they also brought up the idea of like what other people see because they were oh, when yeah. they use the box, they go into the storage unit and then they leave. <laughs> And then they leave, and then they come back and yeah. stay there for the whole night. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. What What do the storage people think about two guys going in? What do the hotel people think? Probably about two guys not going the in? first time they've seen something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. maybe they're not paying much too much attention to that they 
go in and they leave twice. Maybe they're just like, wow, I guess you know, they wanted to go in a second time for reasons. Reasons. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. So, like, this, like, what is, what do you guys think about this whole idea of uh, Aaron using the earbud, right? Like, it seems as if he's wanting to run through the same exact circumstances the same exact set of circumstances that happened every single time before him yeah. he's not wanting to change anything because he's thinking if if i change anything by saying something different i don't know what's going to happen ahead of time yeah. so i was a little confused on why he started doing it because he had already lived through some of it and then he went back and yeah. then he started going he started recording recording it. it but he had already changed that what happened at the party that he went back to change originally change back so originally. I don't know exactly why he started recording right so something like something must have happened maybe he changed up and something bad happened that that that's something that could have happened like maybe yeah. something bad happened at the party and he's wanting to like okay i got to get to a point where i can reset back and get back to the point where I can change something at the party again. Or it could be showing how he's grasping for control. Because mm -hmm. if things are going right at the party, he's like, well, maybe if I if I do this, it will have to work because I'm not changing anything. I'm, then I'm in control. I'm Right. Yeah. And then the guy misses control. the basketball shot regardless. You know, <laughs> sometimes probability, I mean, you know, yeah. it's, things can go the same but you roll a dice and it ends up on a different number than yeah. Just, yeah the whole butterfly effect thing you know they change one little thing one so thing. much more changes yeah like a butterfly flaps its wings and it creates a, a typhoon a tsunami well, across the world you know if you roll a die i mean you could argue oh well that's not really random because of oh well, if you roll in the same way it'll land it was already but not really yeah. essentially yeah. though yeah. that it still is there's a lot of random elements and physics mm -hmm. that you can roll a die or, you know, flip a coin, and it essentially is air resistance, all that stuff, even if it's the same, it's still, it might still end up different. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's the craziest thing. And, I, and that's something that, like, I think even, like, when we think back to, uh, like, Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's what I was thinking and, of, and with Ian, chaos. Was it, uh, Ian Malcolm, Ian Malcolm chaos right? Theory. The chaos theory. Yeah, that, like, little droplets of water on the skin. On the skin. You know, that, in different directions. Exactly, you have the same exact setup, but it still has a different outcome because something to do with quantum physics. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we're trying to talk about that because that's the most to know about quantum physics is it's oh, yeah. a field of physics. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's something where it's like this, this idea of like, well, even if we try and control everything, there's going to be things that like, I even, even what we know about, okay, well, atoms are the smallest things that are the smallest thing that we can get to. Well, actually, there's electrons and protons. Yeah, there's, well, actually, there's like, things smaller than that. The, the qubits. It's a zero or a one. No, it's kind of a <laughs> kind of a zero. It's also kind of it's kind of a little bit of one and zero. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, you get into all these really like really chaotic kind of ideas, where there there is going to be a point where you have no control, and and either you have to accept that or and put in the earpiece and. <laughs> try to, I guess, yeah. pretend. Oh, yeah. And try and pretend that you control. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Good. And that will do it for this video. We'd like to thank Millie Eastup for creating our theme. And join us in the comments section below to go over any other questions and add to the discussion to let us know what you think about this movie. And subscribe so you don't miss our next video where we are going to be discussing or going back to Paddington That's with true. Paddington 2. Yes. This has been Foxtails Movie Club. Thanks for joining us, Stephen. Yeah, thank Thanks you. for having me. I'm Tony Sherman. And I'm Fox. I'm Stephen. Stevenson. <laughs> and we will see you in the next video.